So again, we've got a wave going through our ruler. All right, and we're gonna talk about some different properties of waves also. Okay, so I'm flicking the ruler, and what we can see is we can see the wave going along there. Now you'll remember that the wave is, because the wave is moving along the ruler in this direction, but the oscillations are this way, think about what kind of wave that is. Do you remember? Remember, we've got the oscillations going this way, up and down in, uh, sorry, sorry, not up and down. We don't say up and down. The oscillations are going like this, and the wave itself is at right angles to the oscillations. So what we have is a transverse wave, okay? And you can see that, you can see the ruler moving pretty easily by eye. But what if I change the length of the ruler along the chair? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna adjust my clamp a bit, and bring it further into the chair. And we can just about see it, okay? But we can't see it very easily. So what we've got is our wave is slightly less long. We've decreased the wave length. Okay, it's a less long wave. And we can also see that the wave itself, and you should try this at home as well, the wave moves far more quickly. There's, this is moving at a higher rate. It's much more frequent. So we've talked about two properties of the wave already. We've talked about the wavelength and its frequency. You can see a much lower frequency. There's fewer waves happening every second. And we can see this when we look at our skipping rope. So if I do a fairly relaxed wave along here, in fact, let me just label my floor because that will be useful to help us think about what's going on. So that's a permanent marker, which I'm not going to use because it's a bad idea. Let's just mark a point on the floor. Okay, well, it's actually a line, but uh, it's a point as far as the wave is concerned. So what we get is, if I go fairly relaxed on this, we can see that this wave isn't very frequent. So at that line, we've got maybe, I don't know, a wave happening every, maybe every second. Now what I can do is I can increase that frequency. You can see the waves are far more frequent. Far more waves are passing that point every second. There's probably about three waves passing that line every second, okay? So what we've got is a higher frequency, more waves every second. So frequency is just F equals number of waves per unit time divided by seconds. So there's your frequency. What we also get is another property which I have mentioned, and that is the wavelength. Okay, so let me just set up a waveform on this, and we will talk about what wavelength is. Now, a complete wave is where we have our, let's imagine we've got our molecule, moves up from its equilibrium position, and then back down, and then down, this way, because remember the wave has this form where it's a bit like this here, and then back to its equilibrium position. And that means it's gone through one complete cycle. It's gone all the way up, all the way down, and then back to the middle. That's one complete cycle. So if we think about one complete cycle, cycle on our transverse wave, let's just draw a little more neatly than that. Let's look at, use my floor as a graph. So let's look at this all the way up, all the way down, back to the middle, and then going all the way up again, all the way down, back to the middle. We get this repeating pattern. So one wavelength is where it goes from the equilibrium position all the way to the top to the bottom and then back to the equilibrium position. The same equilibrium position. Let's put directions on these. So here it's moving this way, here it's moving that way, here it's moving this way again. So that is what we call one wavelength. And we represent that using this Greek letter, lambda. Okay, Just because we ran out of letters, W is already being used for something else. Wavelength is measured, of course, well, it's a distance, so it's measured in meters. Wavelength, brackets, lambda, meters. Okay. There we go. So, yeah, letters can be a little bit confusing in physics, but there it is. Other things you need to know about, right, is, uh, let's go back to our rope. So, I'm going to put a little bit of energy in. 
and what we get is quite a small wave. All right, we don't really see very much. There's loads of friction here. That's our restoring force, remember? What I could do is I could put more energy in. And you see the waves are getting taller. I put more energy in, the waves get even taller. Okay? Put more energy in, waves get even taller. You see that? We get a bigger wave, a higher wave. And this is another property of a wave that we call its amplitude. Now if we look at that, let's just compare it on a graph because sometimes the rope can be a little bit unclear. So here we've got another, what kind of wave is this? It's a transverse wave, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw another transverse wave with a smaller amplitude. But I'm gonna draw it with equal wavelength. So let's think about that. How do we make an equal wavelength? Well, we want the uh, equilibrium position to be the same distance along so roughly like this, but we can see it's a much smaller amplitude. A very common mistake a student will make in this is they will say that the amplitude is this full height here. The amplitude is just this height. It's from the equilibrium position to the uh, what we call here the crest or from the equilibri equilibrium position to the what we call here the trough. And we will see here a much smaller amplitude on this. But it's got an equal frequency and an equal wavelength. Because if we imagine they're both moving this way, the same number of waves are passing every second. Remember, here we've got one, two complete waves from the equilibrium all the way up, all the way down, back to the equilibrium. Equilibrium all the way up, all the way down, back to the equilibrium. Two waves, two complete waves, two complete wavelengths. So, we've talked about three properties of waves. We've talked about amplitude, we've talked about the frequency, and we've talked about the wavelength, the wavelength also. So, we, you'll notice when you look at this graph, you've got a wavelength here, but you could also measure the wavelength for, between any two successive crests or any two successive troughs. Because if I draw this very carefully, it should be, uh, yeah, each wave should look exactly the same as the others. So there's another way of measuring wavelength, and you remember the Greek letter lambda to measure the wavelength. So also the features, crests, and troughs of waves. So within all these videos, guys, that's all the knowledge you need for the next couple lessons as we talk about waves. And if you have questions, make sure you email me about them.